climate change affects Switzerland more than other parts of the world. Compared to the global average, the rise in temperature will be higher in this landlocked country. With glaciers melting away, Switzerland is set to lose an important water reservoir, affecting farming and hydropower production. How is the country dealing with these threats? The climate strike wave that Greta Thunberg started also swept through Switzerland. Young people from all over the country have participated in school strikes and Fridays for Future events. Even the pandemic did not stop climate protests. In September 2020, young climate activists camped out in front of the Federal Parliament building in Bern in an act of civil disobedience, while parliamentarians were meeting inside. And climate change isn't only a concern for young people. In late 2020, a coalition of senior citizens accused Switzerland of pursuing a climate policy that violates their right to life. They filed a complaint with the European Court of Human Rights. In the 2019 parliamentary elections, Green Party's promising climate action made historic gains. Voters consider climate change to be the top political challenge facing Switzerland after the COVID-19 crisis. The same year, Swiss citizens launched the so-called Glacier Initiative, which would ban fossil fuels by 2050. The nationwide vote is expected on the issue at the end of 2022, at the earliest. The broader climate movement has sparked research in new technologies of nearly 250 spin-offs founded at Zurich's Federal Institute of Technology since 2010, 34 are looking for ways to combat climate change. The projects range from carbon neutral fuels made from sunlight and air, to technologies that bind carbon dioxide into concrete or filter CO2 directly out of the air. And what is the Swiss government doing? In 1993, Switzerland ratified the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Since then, it has set specific reduction targets for certain periods of time. By ratifying the Paris Agreement in 2017, the country has committed to cutting its emissions in half by 2030 compared to 1990 levels, with some of its emissions reductions happening abroad. Later, the government announced its goal for Switzerland to be climate neutral by 2050. Here are some of the ways Switzerland plans to meet its greenhouse gas reduction goals. By making fossil fuels more expensive, it creates an incentive to use more carbon neutral or low carbon energy sources. Companies can trade the ability to produce carbon emissions, cutting emissions where it's the cheapest to do so. In this way, climate protection goals can be achieved cost-effectively. Since 2010, a third of the CO2 tax revenue has been used to promote energy-efficient renovation and building technologies, as well as renewable energies, waste heat recovery and geothermal energy. New cars are not permitted to exceed average emissions of 95 grams of CO2 per kilometer. This program focuses on consulting about energy efficiency for cities and municipalities, professionals working in mobility, logistics, agriculture, food, trade, energy, construction, settlement planning and management, learn to apply technologies and processes that reduce emissions. The federal government promotes innovative technologies that reduce greenhouse gas emissions and the consumption of resources while supporting the use of renewable energy and increasing energy efficiency. A new CO2 law based on the polluter pays principle should have helped the government to implement its strategy. However, in June of 2021, a narrow majority of voters rejected the law, mainly claiming it would be too expensive and ineffective. So now legislators are back to the drawing board. It looks like Switzerland failed to meet its national targets for 2020. Not even the temporary slowdown of activity caused by the coronavirus was enough to meet the goal. 
yet it remains one of the countries that has actually reduced its emissions in the past 30 years. It's doing better than most European and industrialized countries. In the Climate Change Performance Index, Switzerland comes 14th out of 61. So what will the future bring? How well will the global community manage the issue of climate change? Will Switzerland get away with a two degree rise in temperature or will it see an average increase of nearly seven degrees? In the light of these uncertainties, it's not surprising that the government also has a strategy to adapt to warmer temperatures. Some projects are looking at sealed surfaces like asphalt and concrete, which tend to heat up the environment. Cities could install more green areas, providing shade and water, and use architecture allowing better air circulation. With natural water reserves like glaciers and snow melting away, water can become scarce in some regions in the summer. Projects are looking into new ways to store and distribute water. On the other hand, there will also be more floods, and buildings need better protection. Slopes have to be stabilized against more frequent land movements. Protective forests are vital for fending off rock slides and avalanches. Some projects are looking into which indigenous trees can cope with warmer weather and are evaluating the risks of introducing new kinds of trees. Others are about maintaining biodiversity and nature reserves, while better understanding the spread and impact of invasive species and pests. With all of these issues, information is key. People need to know about the consequences of climate change to better adapt to the future. The aim is to improve the flow of knowledge and collaboration among all players. Will these measures work? Will our grandchildren know what alpine glaciers look like? How is climate change affecting Switzerland? And what might the country look like if nothing is done? In case you missed it, find out in part one of this series. Yeah.